So, you've just clicked on this video and thinking, what in the utter bollocks is this hairy idiot on about? Am I some kind of console player that wants to have a PC, or some PC player that wants everyone on console to ditch the rubbish boxes and buy a PC? No. I'm actually a PC gamer myself, admittedly, but I genuinely think this is quite an interesting thing to talk about. We are mere months away from the launch of the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. The ninth generation of video game consoles is about to begin, and the proverbial dam holding back the gallons of pieces of information regarding what we'll actually be getting from these new systems is about to burst. Whilst we know the Xbox Series X is a vertical-oriented, towering monolith, by the time of writing, all we've seen of the PlayStation 5 is its logo and a heavily stylized dev kit. However, we're going to be focusing on Team Green here. The Series X is launching later this year, presumably November, and looking to Microsoft's newfound relationship with the PC gaming ecosystem, current and upcoming trends in the PC gaming market, and rumours aplenty, there is quite a bit of evidence to point to the Series X not necessarily being just a console. Buckle up, Xbox fans. If you've ever toyed with the idea of PC gaming, the Xbox Series X is going to make that potential very, very easy. I'm Rich from What Culture Gaming, and this is why the Xbox Series X is actually a PC. Xbox is already heavily invested in PC gaming. Microsoft are already pretty established in the PC industry. Duh, they're Microsoft. Not exactly an unknown factor, I know. Though they have tried before to create a Microsoft-centric gaming platform on the PC, the ill-fated game to Windows Live, the soft reboot of the Microsoft Store launching on Windows 10 unified all previously fragmented parts of their software distribution into one place, available across PC, Xbox One, and mobile. Back in 2016, Xbox launched Play Anywhere, which enabled purchase licenses for a select number of games, usually first-party offerings, to work on both Xbox One and or PC, as long as you're signed into the same account. Games Pass arrived in 2017, two years later it launched on Windows 10 alongside a whole new Xbox app. In other words, if you own a PC, you basically own a pseudo Xbox One, but if you come to own an Xbox Series X, you'll own a pseudo PC. It's a market Microsoft are taking seriously, and the PC player base are pretty ecstatic that Xbox titles are being published to the platform. After the announcement that the Halo Master Chief Collection was releasing on Steam, the internet went into meltdown. Currently, the Xbox brand on a hardware level runs parallel to that of a PC, but the Series X might be doing the impossible and making parallel lines cross. Xbox hardware in the past isn't too far removed from a PC anyway, so it's been pretty easy for PC-only developers in the past to jump on the platform. Look at Bethesda Game Studios in The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Until the birth of the original Xbox, Bethesda were very much only invested in PC. The Xbox 360 continued the trend of being a breeze to program for, which gave it an upper hand in the seventh generation, went up against the confusing architecture of the PlayStation 3. Gabe Newell is very, very well known for slagging off the PS3 like nobody's business, and then showing up at E3 in 2011, no, 2010, I must say, to promote Portal 2. And he, had, he did come on stage very sheepishly and said, I've been very outspoken in uh, slagging off PlayStation 3. That was fun. Mini modular gaming PCs are becoming more prominent. CES 2020 in Las Vegas has just about finished at the time of recording. One recurring product at the show are mini gaming PCs with a semi-modular architecture in mind. Not only do these products have a small footprint, they're perfect for users not necessarily adverse in specking their own machines, let alone building them. These mini PCs are a spiritual successor of sorts to the Steam machines of 2015, and both Intel and Razer have been showing off their new hardware in the forms of the Ghost Canyon Nook and Tomahawk, respectively. Since they're much simpler PCs in terms of their upgradability, they open up a huge market to those who aren't very well known with PC hardware, but allow them to reap the rewards of having a mid to high end gaming PC. Now, the Xbox Series X could indeed tick a similar box, but introduce it to a huge, already established customer base of previous Xbox owners. It's ready for the desktop, and it's easily upgradable. Rumours have been circulating that the Xbox Series X will be capable of running Steam, the Epic Games Store, and GOG alongside the usual ability to play standard Xbox Series X and backward compatible titles. Of course, in order to do this, it needs to be running some variation of Windows. Technically, all the Xbox OSs have basically been Windows anyway, but this is more Windows. Whether we'd be able to install Windows 10 as we know it onto a Series X, we'll have to see, but my money is on a streamlined OS known as something along the lines of Windows X. The Xbox One even has keyboard and mouse support on the system itself, 
it's just up to developers to enable it in-game. If you really wanted to, you could use your Xbox One in a desktop environment almost as a purely gaming PC. This could be something Microsoft are going for with the Series X. Even the vertical-oriented form factor of the console itself wouldn't look horrifically out of place on a desk. In fact, it might be more suited to being on a desk than underneath a TV. We have a rough idea about the hardware inside the Xbox Series X, but how exactly it'll be implemented is still up in the air. The aforementioned mini PCs use a simple modular system with most of the main components in one enclosure, which has the ease to be swapped in and swapped out in one fell swoop. What if the Series X works in the same fashion? Rather than releasing half-step systems with incremental upgrades, instead Microsoft released just a new module to be swapped in and out of the system with the next to no hassle. This would also give the platform longevity way past the usual six to seven year life cycle of a console generation, and this pretty much backs the idea of the coming generation being the last. Similar to the 2013 Dustbin Mac Pro, the Series X's exterior shell could simply be unlocked and slid off, with internal modules then being accessible to be removed and swapped in and out of the system. This also opens up the ability to easily upgrade storage internally without having multiple external drives and cables splaying out from the main body of the console. Hypothetically, the Xbox Series X could be supported indefinitely with bulk modular upgrades once every few years if this were the route Microsoft were to go down. Xbox Anaconda and Lockhart are different retail units. Whilst the initial rumours were circulating for the Xbox Scarlet as we knew it at the time, two codename systems called the Anaconda and Lockhart were brought to light. Most assumed these would refer to discrete 1080p and 4K systems similar to the Xbox One S and One X, but what if they were names for the style of console you would purchase? The Anaconda would be the usual console configuration with a controller and a HDMI lead for the television, whereas the Lockhart is bundled with a keyboard, a mouse, Windows X pre-installed, and a DisplayPort cable to achieve the 120fps capabilities of the system Microsoft have teased, as long as you have a suitable display. Of course, with the modular nature of this hypothetical Series X, the Anaconda could easily evolve into the Lockhart by simply purchasing and installing a license for Windows X, and bunging it on a desk with a keyboard, mouse, and monitor you may already have. Xbox have been catering to both pure Xbox One users and pure PC users for a few years now, so why not literally cater for both demographics in one fell swoop? A gateway to pure PC gaming. So a lot of you might be thinking, why release a console that masquerades as a PC? Why not buy just a PC? Whenever this PC versus console argument is brought up, there's always one thing that the console side always go for, and that's that they're, for the most part, a no-nonsense system. Plug it in and start playing. Yes, you'll need to install umpteen updates when you first buy the machine and go through yet another update for each and every new game you put into the machine, but by and large, anyone could purchase, plug in and play on a console. However, the PC landscape is easier to traverse than ever, just look at the small modular PCs we've talked about already. Even pre-built systems are available from almost everywhere now, be it from a dedicated computing retailer, from Amazon, or even a supermarket. Aldi. Aldi released a gaming PC, and I think it was RTX 2060 gaming PC. Aldi. Though you can custom spec a pre-built system, most people don't know their Intel Core i7-9700K from their Ryzen 7 3800X. See? You probably don't know what they are. Which is why both Sony and Microsoft get away with throwing all of this teraflop bollocks at you while you smile, nod, and get your wallets out. The Xbox Series X proves to be the perfect pre-built PC, simply because, in the words of Todd Howard, it just works. There's no need to know about the specs and the like, no installing Windows, potentially, or Steam, potentially, or whichever distribution service you use, potentially. It's just plug and play in the PC space. Buying a pre-built PC still isn't rocket science, but it's a land on which many, many console folk really fear to tread. The Series X could take you by the hand as you cross the threshold saying, now that wasn't too bad, was it? That sounded really mean. I didn't mean to say that like that. Since Microsoft are still catering for the pure PC folk, the Series X being a transitionary system for those entering the PC space won't be a huge loss for Microsoft since their services are still available on the other side. Rather than keep their Xbox and PC audiences separate, they're quite literally establishing the bridge between the now blurring lines between PC and console. So what do you think? Would you invest in a system that you could basically turn into a PC, or would you rather the Xbox stuck to their console roots and just left the PC lot to do things on their own? You will have to let me know down in the comments, because as said, the console PC debate, as much as it's not as roaring as it was back at the beginning of the 8th generation or during the 7th, 
it's still quite an interesting topic for people to talk about. Do you in the comments watching What Culture Gaming, are you Xbox, are you PlayStation, are you PC? Are you Switch? Technically, I'm kind of all of them because I can play anything I want because I have a PS4, a Switch, and a PC that can play Xbox games anyway. But maybe that's the direction they want to go in. Maybe people do want to go towards PC. And if you're, again, concerned about buying a PC because you can go on Amazon and there's this, you know, I don't know what they call them, the, the Tiger with a RTX 2060 and crap loads of RAM and stuff like that, and maybe you still don't know, the Series X is just going to be a thing you can work as a PC. Maybe. So yeah. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I'm hoping you haven't just come here to dislike the video. If you have, you won't have seen this bit because you will not have watched all the way through, but let me know what you think. I'm genuinely intrigued as to what you guys think about this. I'm not hoping that this is the direction they go. I just think it's a really interesting way they could. Don't forget to subscribe to What Culture Gaming if you have not already, and if you have already pressed the button or you're just about to, why not ring the bell as well and don't miss out on anything we do. WhatCulture.com slash gaming has got news, articles, lists, and all sorts of things every single day. And if you do like what I'm wearing, even though it's not actually gaming merch, why not have a look at our gaming merch store, teespring.com slash store slash WCG. Bit of a mouthful, that. There's a link in the description below. We've got some t-shirts. They're pretty cool, even if I do say so myself. I didn't design them, though. No. I've been Rich. You can follow me on Twitter at PickupChangeToe. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you very soon. Bye. Thank you.